are these people? Red, red media, a uh, red stream was personally called out as was Africa stream this week. Um, by yep. butcher Blinken. All right. And they, mm -hmm. they had a, a, something to say about that. And then, um, they, they weren't the only ones. So we'll, let's start with red. They put out a press release, so we're going to read this on September 13th, not the 21st night of September, but on the 13th day of September. Thank you, Earth, Wind, and Fire. U.S. Secretary of State... Remember... That's right. Antony Blinken falsely accused Red of being part of an information war between the imperialistic blocs of the West and East. We are accused of being part of a covert operation, quote-unquote, designed to, quote, push Kremlin-produced content and messaging around the world. <laughs> Furthermore, we're accused of manipulating the outcomes of democratic elections in the United States and around the world. First and foremost, we categorically reject these entirely false claims. We do not need to be lectured by Butcher Blinken on freedom of expression while he is complicit in a genocide in Palestine that has killed more than 40,000 people and over 125 journalists to date. We don't need any government or intelligence service to express our deep disbelief in this capitalist system that allows crimes against humanity to occur in Palestine, Ukraine, Sudan, Congo, and across the world as we watch in real time. The perpetrators of these crimes are not only the U.S., Russia, China, or the EU. It is every individual, every state, every media outlet, NGO, and organization that colludes in keeping this deadly system alive. You are all responsible. We don't yep. need... You, you bet. We don't need to lift a finger vis-a-vis -vis elections anywhere. And that is Reef's number one main point. And that is the reason why I printed this and brought it and clipped it. We don't need to lift a finger vis-a-vis -vis elections anywhere. The capitalist system is killing the planet under the weight of its own contradictions not due to any antagonistic actor's role in bourgeois elections. None of the above, motherfuckers. Yep. None of the above. We have much more to say, but for now, let's be clear about where this attack against us began. Since October 7th, we have been at the forefront of covering Germany's horrifying crackdown on pro-Palestinian voices. A crackdown that has shocked the world, along with UN officials, and human rights organizations like Amnesty International. We knew there was great risk in covering this topic in a country that is one of the leading collaborators in the genocide, but there was simply no way we could look away or stand silent. In May of 2024, the German newspaper leading the criminalization of Palestine solidarity, Tagesspiegel, falsely ac accused us of organizing massive pro-Palestinian protests in Germany, a claim we have already debunked. Fast forward to September 13th, the U.S. State Department not only repeated this absurd and false claim, but it used it as evidence that we are part of a covert operation. Let's be clear. If red did not exist... The unprecedented and powerful protests in Germany and around the world against the genocide in Palestine would still have taken place. The only difference is that fewer people around the world would have known about them. Something that would have been very convenient for Butcher Blinken, Germany, Tagesspiegel, Spiegel, and all of those complicit in the genocide in Palestine. What the U.S. government and Tagesspiegel don't understand is that they are the cause of these protests and they will continue to be the targets of dissent as long as they enable and actively support this genocide. Lincoln may have put a target on our backs, but let's not forget that it was a newspaper, Tagesspiegel, which loaded the gun. We hold them personally responsible for any harm to our staff who will continue to be inspired to raise their voices by the brave, wonderful people who take to the streets 
every day to make this world a better place. Hell yeah, Red. Hell yeah. We stand in solidarity with them too. They are not Russian bullshit propaganda. They stand against the Russians as much as they stand against the United States and against Great Britain and Australia and against China. This is nonsense. This is a witch hunt. This is setting up to Russiagate the country and to call everybody that has any kind of dissident voice a, ter a domestic terrorist to shut them down. A couple other Indie Media Award honorees, Mint Press News published it through Popular Resistance, okay, which is where I picked it up, but this is Robert Inlakesh. You guys have read a lot of his stuff on INN News. Check some of those out. Yep. He also mentions that African Stream was one of the latest media to face U.S. bans, right, and that um, the head of uh red redfish or red who was the regarding the allegations of ties to redfish and rt dog who is the the ceo of red dismissed the claims stating that the only basis for such accusations is that some employees previously worked at redfish dog drew a comparison though a little bit extreme arguing that just as one cannot assume germans today are nazis because their families had nazi affiliations one cannot make the same assumption about Red due to former employment connections. I think that's a bit of a stretch because it's still the same person employed at different places. But he further criticized Tagge Spiegel, suggesting that their alleged Nazi past might influence their support for the Israeli state's actions in Palestine because, of course, they like the behavior. Shortly after the U.S. State Department's allegations, Red and African Stream were banned from Meta and YouTube without detailed explanations. When asked about the impact of these actions, Dogru expressed concerns that the company might be forced to close. He feared that he could be arrested and charged with foreign intelligence activities, which could lead to imprisonment. He emphasized that their only crime, quote unquote, was conducting journalism that challenged Western imperialist narratives. Right, again, there, right away. And again, Popular Resistance, as well as Mint Press News, Indie Media Award honorees. Support them. There's their, their links, popularresistance.org and mintpressnews.com. Again, if you go to indiemediaawards.com or .substack.com, um, you'll be able to see a page with links for all of the honorees for 2022 and 2023. But not only did those who write about the uh, what was happening here, Red and Robert Inlakesh, our friend the mm -hmm. dissident also wrote about African Stream, and I grabbed the uh, a tweet from them from the other day uh, on Friday, First, he puts that the Biden administration tried to shut down an, indep an independent media outlet, okay, with evidence-free Russiagate allegations, which is exactly what Red is claiming. That these are evidence-free Russiagating. You're calling us, you're saying that uh, we have former employees who used to work for Russia, RT, or Sputnik, or founded the company, but there's no link to Russia now. So the dissident... Mm -hmm. The dissident states that in the latest blow to free speech, Blinken has accused the independent outlet African Stream without evidence of being run by RT. What we also found is that not only did YouTube and Meta shut down African Stream, but Stripe. We've talked about mm -hmm. Stripe and their power over payment processing within the digital world and for content creators. Stripe also has yep. decided to close out African Stream's account. So now they have no way to earn on Twitter. Um, and they have no other platform to publish to. Uh, not cool. 
So support African Stream if you can somehow, some way. I'm sure there's somewhere on their website to donate directly. Uh, also, the donor, the dissident. You know, look, all these independent outlets are struggling. I'm getting emails from um, Truthout like daily, just hitting the panic button. We need money, or we're gonna have to shut down. And we've been around a long time, and we don't want to have to do that. Obviously, so right. uh, you know, there's a bigger crunch than uh, than I've seen in four years on on it. And what's funny is is that government money as well as private money, and we covered this in one of the earliest episodes of How Do We Miss That, what, what, what was called Good News or Good Something, that was literally funded by George Soros and Reid Hoffman. Yeah. There has been billions injected into the quote-unquote independent media space by government and by big money billionaires to try to flood the waters um, with corporate duopoly nonsense that serves capitalism primarily so that they can drown out the actual independents that are out there. And then we get to what Israel just pulled. This morning, now, we covered back in, I think it was April, when Al Jazeera in Gaza was shut down, or in Jerusalem was shut down, and they confiscated all the equipment and and they shut down the stream. And that just happened in Ramallah in the West Bank this morning, again. Mm -hmm. So Al Jazeera breaking news this morning, 9 o'clock Eastern. Al Jazeera denounces Israeli armed raid on Ramallah office and vows to continue co coverage of Gaza and the occupied Palestinian territories. And I blew this up a little bit bigger, so hopefully you can read it. I'll read it out. In the early hours of Sunday morning, Israeli occupation forces raided Al Jazeera Media Network's office in Ramallah in the occupied West Bank and ordered its immediate closure. This action follows the decision by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet in May 2024 to shut down Al Jazeera's operations within Israel. The network vehemently condemns and denounces this criminal act by the Israeli occupation forces. Al Jazeera reject the draconian actions and the unfounded allegations presented by Israeli authorities to justify these illegal raids. Al Jazeera reaffirms its unwavering commitment to continue reporting on the war in Gaza and the ongoing occupation of the Palestinian territories and the regional escalation. The raid on the yep. office, the raid on the office and seizure of our equipment is not only an attack on Al Jazeera, but an affront to press freedom and the very principles of journalism, which we know they don't care about. These oppressive measures are clearly intended to prevent the world from witnessing the reality of the situation in the occupied territories and the ongoing war on Gaza and the devastating impact on innocent, on innocent civilians. Despite these egregious attempts to stifle Al Jazeera's voice and sever Al Jazeera's reporting to the world, the network remains steadfast in its mission to report the truth with integrity even under the most challenging and dangerous circumstances. Al Jazeera will not be intimidated or deterred by efforts to silence its coverage. Israel's ongoing suppression of the free press is blatantly aimed at concealing its actions in the Gaza Strip and the occupied West Bank in contravention of international and humanitarian law. Israel's direct targeting and killing of journalists along with arrests, intimidation, and threats, will not deter Al Jazeera from its commitment to coverage. Al Jazeera urges all organizations advocating for media freedom and human rights, along with all other concerned entities, to condemn these repeated attacks on journalists and the press by Israel, and to demand accountability for those seeking to bury the truth under the rubble of war. Agree. The network holds Netanyahu's government personally responsible for the safety of its journalists 
and will pursue all available legal channels through international legal institutions to protect both its rights and its journalists, as well as the public's right to information. Okay, I mean, yes, and they're right. I don't know what kind of recourse they're going to have anywhere. You know, look, they, yeah. they went to the ICC and the ICJ, and they've gotten arrest warrants issued for Netanyahu and Gallant and Smotrich, and nothing's yeah. happened. So, um, we're fucked. You know, Mist Misty always says, I think just about every morning I've seen Misty since October 7th tweet, fuck Israel. And mm -hmm. after this again, fuck Israel. That's bullshit. Um, and Dr. Nick says that nothing will happen. Um, also correct in that, um, Al Jazeera, unfortunately, will finally get back to me about that unnecessary copyright strike. I hope so, but I'm not counting on it because they, they haven't. And I think we have less than 30 days until it comes off at this point. We've been sitting on it yeah. and, and held under hostage of threat of losing our channel for one further copyright strike now for the last 60 plus days. So Who are like a, a, a 20, hey. 20 second video. Nice. All right. So, you know, speaking of, and let me go back here so that thing will come across. Accord Lord. Oh, dude. Thank you so much. One of the biggest supporters of our channel. We really appreciate that. Um, Here's them putting it out. Criminal Act. Al Jazeera denounces the Israeli armed raid on the Ramallah office. That's the order that was given to shut it down for 45 days. Why? Because they published yeah. inconvenient truth, effectively. All right. Yeah. So, again, the talking about stuff like this is why we also are demonetized. You can be like Sean, and if you have some extra loose change to sitting in the couch, hook us up, buy us a coffee at co-fee.com slash any news network. Cash app is the, also the fastest way, easiest way to get it to us. You do rumble rants. My channel, uh, youtube.com slash IND left news is actually monetized and you can actually leave a super chat over there. Still trying to get the 50 bucks. Money so I can get... is there. Yes, it is. It's still there. Same thing. You know, uh, for some people, their Rockfin money is too.